Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to KBI, Klubbert Indonesia, and today we have another special guest from Germany, uh, Justus Geilhofer. Hi Justus. Hi guys, good to see you. <laughs> It's good to see you and thank you for joining us. So today uh, we are going to talk uh, with Justus. He is a minister now at in Germany. In Freiburg Cathedral, yeah. is it right? Yeah, and in a Lutheran church, right? Yes. And he also has completed his PhD, and his doctoral dissertation has been published uh, in German, Gnade als Trinitarisches Sein. Yeah. So, can you tell us, uh, Justus, uh, we are curious to hear, what is your book about, actually? Yeah. Well, um, my well, it is, I hope uh, the the first monograph on Bruce McCormick, um, and since it is the first one, uh, it has a very historical approach. So the idea was to um, start basically with Bart and what Bart left us, and then show what McCormick. Um, made out of it um, and I kind of follow his biography um, or basically his um, his scholarly um, or his biography as a scholar and the idea is to start with basically his dissertation or actually his um, the work he has done with his dissertation and then follow um, <clears throat> the, the, the the following 30 years of um, scholar um, scholarly work um, at Edinburgh and um, pretty soon then at Princeton Seminary Um, and uh, it um, well, I, I hope um, it is kind of um, the introductory work um, to um, his um, the first or like to, to his Christology. That is the idea. I don't think um, it's the whole package, um, but I think it's it, it's um, it it shows what um, drives um, his theological work. Um, and yeah, you 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 kind of have to decide um, in which language you are writing in. Um, and since I am German, and since uh, I did it at Göttingen University, um, it is in German. Um, but I, the, that's why I'm so happy to be your guest. I think um, it has more, or it doesn't have more readers that are native English speakers, um, but I think it has way more people who are interested in the subject that are English native speakers. So, um, yeah, let's see. Maybe um, it gets translated or um, somehow, um, yeah, the work I do, I did, um, and I do with others um, is kind of introduced um, to the English speaking audience. Let, let's see. Um, yeah, but that's, that was the idea of my book. Uh, thank you. Uh, very interesting, uh, I think. And uh, because today we find a lot of English scholars that are popularizing Bart into English. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bart himself writes in German, right? So, and then Bruce McCormack is, I think, one of them. And you write about McCormack, but in German. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so maybe the next question would be, uh, what about the title, uh, Grace as Trinitarian Being? Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, people, I think I think uh, many people will be curious. Yeah, what what do you mean with that, uh, Grace as Trinitarian Being? Can you explain some of the ideas? Yeah. Well, at the end, you have to find a title, um, and um, I, I had a lot of um, ideas how to put it. Um, well, I, I hope it shows um, the the impetus um, of uh, McCormick's work, um, which is that God is not some track being that somehow enters into into the scope of the world and our lives and then somehow connects himself with um, what happens to Jesus Christ, but um, is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. And so what we encounter in this God human, Jesus Christ, uh, is God himself. 
um, and God himself is what happens in Jesus Christ, and this is pure grace. So, living to the death of the cross and on Easter morning, um, Jesus is nothing else than grace to everybody who encounters him. Um, but um, it's not that easy. Um, since 2000 years, we are struggling to find words for what happened um, 2000 years ago. Um, and it's kind of that we are trying to say that the God, the Jewish people were talking about um, um, thousands of years before um, is present, is Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus Christ um, gave us in the moment he left the earth, um, the Holy Spirit. Uh, maybe this Holy Spirit is the one who holds those two others together. Um, at, at, and at some place we started calling this um, Trinity or Triunity. Um, and um, from the beginning on, um, we had a hard time uh, finding the exact or the right words for what we mean by Trini, tri, Triunity, Trinitarian being, and so forth. Um, and this is why I tried to put these two complexes together by saying God is grace. Um, and this grace we encounter in this biography, in this God human, um, is this um, triune being. Um, <laughs> and uh, I hope it's it's kind of um, inviting uh, to open up the book and say, well, I I really want to dig into that um, and see uh, um, what's going on in there. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's uh, that is the the driving idea behind um, Gnade als Trinitarisches Sein. Thank you, Arvin. Do you have a question? Uh, th thanks, Eustace, for, for for coming here. Um, so, do you find this notion of uh, grace as Trinitarian being to be um, Bruce McCormick's overarching idea um, and contribution uh, to the field? Do you think that would be the thesis statement? Um, yeah. Well, I think it is. Um, it is what what. Um, it is, I, I think it is um, what what makes Bruce McCormick's work um, as special as it is, um, because I mean, um, to be fair, every systematic theologian is kind of trying to find out what we mean by Jesus Christ is Lord. I mean, everybody has his. I mean, we have people doing anthropology, we have people doing soteriology, and so forth. But I mean, we all as Christian Christian theologians are driven by um, this complex idea that people started saying Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, and I think um, he he took this sentence um, as serious as one can try to take it. Um, and uh, he, since 30 years coming from Bard, he's trying to find a way um, to connect um, this statement with um, modern critical thinking. And he says that um, the idea of triunity, um, of Trinitarian being, um, fits into modern um, critical thinking. Um, but when, but even, but only when um, it says that uh, um, G Jesus Christ is Lord. If we don't come from Jesus, um, from the fate of the God human Jesus Christ, there is no way we can um, we can uh, we can say that God is triune. It is not an abstract concept. It is not something um, philosophers and can make up. Um, they did, um, but um, it never really. Um, now I have to uh, try to um, prevent uh, German um, sayings, uh, but it never um, it never really um, um, for him. Um, showed that Jesus, um, in his human nature, was was um, Lord, but it was always um, something um, um, abstract that kind of was put on the fate of Jesus Christ and never coming from um, this, yeah, human fate Jesus Christ had, and then um, building up on that. Um, so this is a maybe just a hint. 
I think I never say this, or like I, I say it once in my book. I think um, Bruce McCormick um, is very, um, very much Pannenbergerian. Um, I think um, uh, I think he he very much comes from the critique of Wolfhard Pannenberg um, on Bart, nam namely um, that Bart tried to start off his um, dogma of the Trinity with the content of um, Revelation, but at the end, um, Bart um, created his um, doctrine of the Trinity um, on the ground of an abstract concept of Revelation. Um, and I think this is basically the critique um, of uh, Bruce McCormick. He says that um, Bart is right in basically um, everything um, he says, but um, a lot of pre presuppositions um, are maybe not wrong, but some just don't fit together. Uh, and so we, as Bardians, we have to decide and then just start again um, with Bard and then going over Bard um, with his ideas. And, I, and this is basically um, what Bard himself called a good Bardian, um, which is um, not um, sticking um, to uh, the words um, of Bart himself, but um, trying to um, stick to the idea he had and then just um, just just do it the way um, it can be done in a modern world. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I think it does make sense that Pannenberg would be the critique and the implication of Bart's uh, theology of revelation. Um, if this election of Jesus Christ is really necessary in God, and that's how we know everything, even the Trinitarian God, only through the revealed Jesus Christ in history, then that means you have revelation as history. And that's how Pannenberg begins. And it's more scriptural in that sense. You have the Trinitarian being interacting in the history of covenant, again, you know, respecting uh, Bart's insight. Uh, it's the outcome of election is covenant. Right? Yep. Um, but on the other hand, I think Bart was always afraid of conflating history of man with God. And I think that early rejection yeah. um, of, of uh, Heil to seek in, in human history is what he yeah. what he rejects. Um, yeah, so because, think, be, be, because he had he had teachers doing this all the time. Yeah. Um, and it did not end up very well. Um, so this, this and uh, it is kind of a pity um, that he had always this fear to take history itself serious. Um, because he was always um, occupied with um, making God as the other very, very strong. Um, but yeah, so at the end, he kind of felt like um, he should have done a little bit different. Um, and that's basically the beginning of my dissertation. Um, the saying of Bart, well, I... I I, I donated a lot, a lot of time um, of my scholarly work to to present God as um, wholly other than the world and its history. Um, and the more I did it, the more I found out um, that, um, that this, this makes history something very, very important. And the man, Jesus Christ, in this history, very, very important. Um, but that was um, in 1967 or 68, I guess. And uh, that's the year he died. Um, but that... Yeah, that makes theology and and I don't yeah yeah um, thinking um, such an su such an interesting um, thing um, because he just gave us something and we we have to we have to deal and we can work with it which is just great. Thank you. Very interesting. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to read uh, your your book. Yeah, once <laughs> once I get the opportunity to get it. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, do you also critically evaluate uh, Bruce McCormack in in your book? Uh, and if you do, then I I'm curious. Uh, what are some of the aspects that you criticize? Yeah. Well, I think I think at uh, some point, um, um, why is my son in my room now? <laughs> um, at some points I do, um, but I have a very, I'm very, um, how do you say, I'm very lucky. Um, Don't worry, I also have a toddler, he's playing the piano there. So. Good talk. 
<laughs> I am very lucky um, because I think Bruce McCormick is um, at some at a lot of points very critical with himself. Um, because um, uh, what um, makes him pretty different from a lot of um, thinkers um, nowadays is that he he is kind of re-evaluating himself constantly. Um, you in his books, um, for example, um, already orthodox and modern, um, you find you find a lot of footnotes um, saying, well. Um, Critical readers will see that um, uh, I had a kind of different standpoint in 1994 when I um, delivered um, these lectures in Chicago at the Henry Center or whatever. Um, and, I, and let me explain to you why I changed my mind. Um, and that makes it, um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to write about Bruce McCormick because uh, most of the time, um, I mean, you have to re-evaluate his re-evaluation of course um but i think he he's very clear um most of the time in when he changed something and he's not afraid um to tell us why um which is pretty cool i think um and uh, most of the time he says well listen um it, it, i was just at the beginning to realize um that bart kind of changed for example, between CD2-2 and then CD3 and 4, um, that there's something we should call a break or whatever, or a change or however, or a development, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this, uh, th at that point of my, of my own development, it made me think X, Y, whatever. Um, and now I think um, like five, six years later, um, addressing this topic of Christology. Um, let me tell you why um, I think different now about it. Um, so, and um, it, uh, one of the critiques of my book was that it is actually a bit too affirmative. And it is. Um, I don't think it's, it is a doxology of Bruce McCormick. I think it is a critical book. Um, and my advisor um, was a, ver a very Lutheran theologian. Um, it was, um, sh she's a Pannenberg uh, um, scholar, like she, Pannenberg was her dissertation and habilitation advisor. Um, so she's very Lutheran. Um, she's, ve she's very much not into Bart. And that was something that was important to me. Because um, it was important. I did not want to go to Princeton or maybe to, I don't know, Münster or Heidelberg um, or whatever, um, or Geneva, where you have Bardians as scholars and then write a dissertation um, on the new generation of Bardianism. Um, because my fear was um, it won't be critical enough. Um, or I will I will get caught into inner Bardian conflicts that are not very productive to what I actually want to do. So I looked for someone who was not a Bardian, but who is a very good um, systematic theologian. And I I asked her, listen, I think I think this is the new approach um, of the past I don't know twenty years. I think. Um, in Germany, we had Bart, and then we had Jüngel, we had Pannenberg, and we still have, uh, thanks be to God, um, Jürgen Moltmann. Um, and then things kind of, since then, we do not have new approaches. Um, and we have, um, in the English-speaking world, new approaches. Um, based, for example... Um, Uh, Jensen, Jensen is something we could call a new theological approach at some point. Um, and I think um, Bruce McCormick, as someone who says, as a Bardian, we have some points where Bard was wrong. We cannot, like, if you see the entire picture of what Bard did, there are contradictions. It is impossible to read, for example, through church dogmatics as a whole. You have sentences that are conflicting. And if we don't see this, we cannot um, like 
um, go on as Bardians. Um, so we need to address this in order to be able to continue Bard's work. Um, at, and at some point, he has some um, pretty interesting ideas that some people just drive crazy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, so, so, some people even called him a heretic, um, which is ludicrous, I think. Um, but uh, And at some point I thought, hey, I think there's so much. Maybe it's worth writing a book on all of this. And let's evaluate at the end, or maybe not even in the book, if this is um, a new theological approach. But I think it is, it is worth um, evaluating um, as an entire thing. And um, she, gladly she, she said yes. She was very strict, uh, um, but it was worth it. Um, and now we have the book and it's nothing more um, than an invitation to um, Bardians um, and interested other theologians to say, hey, what do you think about this? Um, now we, I, I tried to put everything in one book um, and let's, I, I hope um, you read it. And at some point, um, we we can do what Bruce McCormick wants us to do, which is um, just um, go on and not just side Bart once again and once again, but um, say, hey, this is one of the greatest theologians that ever um, put feet um, on God's earth. Um, but still, he was human and um, to err is human. And let's um, look where some errors are and... Um, Let's talk about how we deal with it and let's move on. And that was just interesting. Um, yeah, and this it, still, it's a, or, or again, it's, it's a pity it's not in English. <laughs> Thank you. Very interesting. Arvin? So as a follow-up to that, um, can you summarize a few points where uh, Bruce diverges from Karl Barth? Well, uh let, let, let's let's concentrate on one point because there is so much in it. Um, what Bruce McCormick um, pretty early said um, and uh, continues to say is that um, uh, something revolutionary happened in CD22 where Bart um, talks about election. It is actually, um, I mean, lots of people saw this. It is actually already pretty um, exciting that um, Bart, um, as a reformed theologian, puts election... Um, or, or like treats election as part of the doctrine of God, which is it, which is just super interesting. Um, and the reason why he does so is that he wanna he, he wants to um, show that um, what what happens in election is simply what God is. Um, it's a pity that he did that in CD22 because he already wrote CD1112 and CD21. <laughs> and uh, um, there, um, for example, he treated um, uh, the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, so he already talked about the Trinitarian being of God before he makes this revolutionary claim that um, election um, is the um th that that god says in election what he is like he def in in election god defines his being um and uh, what bart uh, what bruce mccormick uh, is trying to show us um during the 90s and the early th the years of 2000 is that um the the presuppositions of um his doctrine of the trinity um, in CD1 are um, conflicting with um, the implicit um, presuppositions of his doctrine of election. Um, and um, he, he deals um, a great um, um, deal of time um, figuring out um, what these presuppositions are and where they are conflicting. Um, and already this um was was uh, was shocking um to some of uh, uh um, nowadays uh, nowadays bardians um because um only the idea um that uh, the church father of the 20th century um had um conflicting presuppositions um um had a wow effect um and um uh, but, but i think bruce mccormick is right um, and I think this uh, this is um, the first historical 
um, analytic um, uh, uh, thing he he fo he found out about Bart and church dogmatics, um, and uh, this is the the starting point of his own constructive work. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there is a, there are a lot of um, followers of, of Bruce McCormick, of course, in terms of the revisionist reading, even if you don't agree with him. Yeah. Um, it does have um, interesting um, implications. And I wonder if you discuss any of those implications of taking the election of the Son of God being constitutive of his Trinitarian being. Yeah. What what problems um, does it solve in Bruce yeah. and and how does he develop that further to other doctrines? Yeah, well, um, the classical thinking, more or less, um, and the, is um, something Bart, even though Bart used a modern language, he kind of stuck to um, a classical idea of God um, in CD1, which is um, God is almighty, God is all knowing, God is all powerful. Um, and um, creation um, and everything that followed, um, everything that happened in Jesus Christ um, and will happen um, is something that comes contingently to um, what, God, uh, what God is necessarily. So we have the almighty, perfect um, being of God, kind of... Uh, and a substantia, when we use the Latin word, uh, the, the Latin um, term. Um, and uh, this substantia decides at one point of its eternal being that it wants to create um, the world, it wants to, it freely wants to redeem the world, um, and so on. Um, and Bart um, didn't see a big problem with that, um, even um, when he talks about election um, as part of the doctrine of God. Um, but um, he makes um, it very clear right at the beginning of CD2-2 um, that what happens in um, election is constitutive for this eternal um, being of God. Um, and it basically always comes down to a very simple point, um, which is um, until the doctrine of God in CD2.2, Bart says God would be the same God, even though he would not have created the earth um, and sent Jesus um, into the world. He would be the same Trinitarian perfect being, um, even though he did not do any of these things I just named. Some pages later, he says all the things that happened. Um, and first and foremost, what happened on the cross is constitutive for what God is. So when you, f the following sentence would be, God would not be the same if he did not create it and send um, Jesus in, into the world, and so on. Um, so these are the conflicting statements within church dogmatics. Um, and um, now we have a huge problem because we have two different views on what God's freedom is. In the first three books of church dogmatics, God's freedom is that he is as the only one on earth and in the universe, able to decide between all the options that are there. He can decide to create the world or just to do not so, but he would still be the same, free, almighty, eternal, perfect. And in, in CD 2.2, so three books later, um, we have um, an idea of God's freedom that is kind of like, because Bart is, Bart is saying a lot, but sometimes he's not saying very much. Um, but that somehow is trying to say that God's freedom is creating the world, is reconciling the world with himself, is redeeming the world. Which says that um, it, is a, this, uh, it is another idea of freedom, because um, it is a freedom 
that is um, actual, that is acted out in the covenant of grace. So if you put away the covenant of grace and everything that followed from the covenant of grace, um, you, 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 have a, you, you are struggling um, with like um, saying what um, this new idea of, um, of divine freedom is supposed to mean. And this is the huge problem um, uh, Bruce McCormick is trying to show his um, readers. Um, and he is opting for um, the second one. He says, this is showing what God really is. God is not an abstract notion of being. God is not um, an ends and substantia that we have to somehow um, think together with this Jesus Christ Thing. No, God is Jesus Christ. And it, the duty of a theologian is to see God's freedom in Jesus Christ, to see God's might in Jesus Christ, and not um, thinking about um, God's might, even though Jesus Christ died on the cross. No, God's power is the cross. Um, but this is not just something, uh, this is not only a sentence of faith, it is a sentence of critical thinking. Um, and he's um, trying to, at some points, trying to do this critical thinking. Um, thank you. That's very, very interesting. I think it, you, you bring it up to, to, to freedom. And I wonder if you being... Uh, with with a, with a Lutheran advisor, whether there is some switch perhaps from this kind of, I don't want to say Lutheran, but maybe kind of a radical omnipotence that God could do anything that he wanted in earlier dogmatic CD1 before 2.2. But in 2.2, his freedom is kind of constrained within the covenant. Once he's made that election commitment, his operation of freedom is more constrained, and that's more of a reformed uh, perhaps idea. Would you say that, that this, there might be this switch in terms of, of freedom and um, would people would would people disagree with the second notion just because of the idea of freedom is more constrained now? Well, I, 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 I don't I, I have to admit I'm not very good in um, differentiating um, the different conf, um, confessional um, standpoints. I think um, I'm well enough um, to do a, as a Lutheran pastor, a dissertation on a reformed theologian, but still, um, I think um, you guys are way better in this than I am. Um, I think, um, I think the, the, uh, I think Bart is more reformed um, in the early stages of church dogmatics. Um, this is my opinion. I, I think I, I see, um, I see a, um, I, I see a God um uh who who or like um the the what 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 stands behind um cd one 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 two two one is i think the reformed urge to show the might and the power um of the of of the almighty trinitarian god um and not um which is the driving factor of the lutherans where the graceful God is. Like the, the urge of the Lutheran theologian is basically, I mean, not always, and a lot of bad things happen, but like um, Luther was driven by the question, how, wh where is the graceful God? How am I receiving, what am I supposed to do to meet and encounter the grace of God? And I th this is something I see more in CD 2.2 and the following books. And because there, Bart is trying to show us um, how God really can be graceful, not as one action. Um, this is something um, we Lutherans struggle with a lot, that we are preaching the grace of God but um, we are um, teaching um, the Deus absconditus. Um, we are teaching a God who is behind this graceful actions. Um, and the question is, 
um, how big is this Deus Absconditus? And where is this Deus Absconditus? And is he maybe bigger than this graceful Deus? Um, and if yes, uh, what does the grace at the cross means, uh, mean? Um, so this is our problem. But I think the, the urge to find God's grace and to um, point on it and say, there we have God's grace. And there, as, as faithful people, we can try to grasp on it. I think um, this is something I encounter in CD22 and the later volumes um, of this um, huge book. Um, and I think Bruce, in, Bruce McCormick, in emphasizing uh, this part of church dogmatics or this aspect of Bart's thinking is, I'm not making him Lutheran, but I think there are a lot of um, Lutheran motives um, in, um, in his... Um, in his thinking, and this is why I, I, I said I, I think he is a lot in common with um, uh, Wolfhard Pannenberg because um, this is also the Lutheran aspect of Wolfhard Pannenberg's thinking, um, trying to find um, the, the the real content of revelation and not some abstract concept of revelation, but no, what does Jesus do, and how does it um, trigger? thinking about a trinitarian god um i think um this is something where we meet lutheran um aspects of, of thinking in, in both of these um of these of these approaches mm, thank you so if I'm, if I'm hearing you right uh you you perceive the way you read Bartas, he is very reformed in the beginning where where you could end up perhaps with a deistic god and this is what Bart does not want he wants yeah. god to be involved and to be very connected much in the spirit of luther that god is uh, with us especially in the divine yeah. providence and accompanying yeah um but bart still is reformed because he places that grace not necessarily on the cross right away but in election so it is yeah. still within a reform architecture with Lutheran motifs, perhaps. Uh, yes. This is yeah. perhaps how you, you read him. Yeah. Um, I okay. really I really try not to read something into him. Um, yeah. I think we all do. Um, but I, I really never say in my book um, that he becomes Lutheran. I really don't want to say um, this. Um, yeah. but and these are labels. Just, so. Yeah, it was just interesting to me to find these um, yeah, motives, whatever. But I think he's a great reformed theologian. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. That's a very- so, Sorry for interrupting, uh, Arvind. Sorry, please. I- No, no. Yeah, thank you. I think that's a very interesting reading. Never heard of it. Uh, maybe uh, I also want to ask you a question because we don't always have a guest from Germany. Uh, you're the first one, actually. <laughs> so I, I'm just curious. Uh, this is more general. Uh, what's the situation of Bart, uh, do you think? Bart studies uh, and Bart reception in the churches, in the Christian communities, yeah. in Germany, yeah. uh, at the well, present? Well, it it, it slowly fades away. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm sad to say. Um, it, um, That's what I uh, thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. Um, uh, but we 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 uh, we have we have a bunch of problems in Germany right now, um, which um, kind of explains the, the base, uh, which kind of explains this phenomenon too. Um, yeah, let, let me let me show you. Or like, this is my my um, interpretation. Of what happened? Um, we had um, Karl Barth um, as one of the few um, theologians um, who um, were from the beginning on during the church struggle um, in the Third Reich, the so-called Third Reich, um, as someone who um, basically never. Um, um, became anti-Semitic, um, pro-Hitler, whatever. So, as if, I mean, he was a religious socialist, so maybe he was kind of immune, whatever. But um, from the beginning on, he said, this is bad. We should prevent it. We should fight it. Um, and um, 
I do it as a theologian, but at the end, I will pick up arms um, if it's necessary, which he did. <laughs> um, and um, so he was, he became super influential after the war because people were looking for someone um, wh whose thought could be reliable. Um, so there were like, there was a huge um, um, urge to find, um, who find theological thinkers that did not um, became, uh, that did not become um, pro-Nazi in some sort. Um, and there were a few um, um, because the Nazis also killed some of them. Um, so, uh, or they died during the war or, um, yeah. So um, with some exceptions like Helmut Thielicke, um, and others who were um, just younger, not to be um, involved with all this. Um, uh, we had a restart that was very much influenced um, by Barth and Reformed theology because a lot of Lutheran theologians um, played a very ambivalent role during the Nazi era. Um, uh, so um, we had a huge influence of Barthian theology during the first two decades. Uh, then we had um, the death of Bart in 68. Um, 68 is a huge milestone in German and European um, history. Um, we have um, in the Western part of Germany, huge, um, I mean, not a revolution, but um, huge movement. crowds on the street um, because um, they were um, criticizing their parents for being Nazis um, and um, then kind of went too far um, <laughs> at the end. But um, that was a huge um, um, a marking point um, in, in Western German society and Western European societies. Um, and Bart played a huge role in all of this. Um, and uh, here is where the problem starts. Um, Bart has always been both a great theologian, but also a guy with great ethics. Um, not so much in his personal life, but um, in um, so yeah. And uh, <laughs> and uh, what happened was that um, the he was very much admired um, for his ethics, and that kind of um, prevented people from critical thinking. Because, um, I mean, you won't criticize the only big theologian um, that stood up against um, Nazism. Uh, not Nazism. So um, how can someone, or maybe the only one, who was against Hitler from the beginning be wrong? We have the same problem with Bonhoeffer. Um, so um, his ethics kind of over... Um, yeah, it, it was hard to criticize Bart because he was just such a great guy. And so for um, the years um, 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, the preoccupation of Bardians was to say that Bart was right. And that drove a lot of people away from Bart. Because um, um, I had one of the last Bardians of this sort, um, and it brought me to Bruce McCormick. Because what I heard was <laughs> week after week, okay, I tell you what Bart said, and um, I believe it. And I think he was right. He was perfectly right. Um, and I want you to say it again um, <laughs> when um, you have, when you're writing the test with me. <laughs> and that was great because um, I, was, I, went, I went to Jena because I wanted to learn from Bart. And I wanted to learn about Bart, so that was perfectly fine. But after two, two and a half years, you kind of get tired of just like reproducing um, Bart's thoughts. Um, and this is how I um, came across Bruce McCormick, because at some point I, I heard about a theologian who criticized Bart. Um, and that just sounded very exciting. Um, and um, this is why I went to Princeton. And this it's the other thing um, I want to say now. I, um, we um, see now that, um, well, I mean, it sounds arrogant, but I think for, um, for hundreds of years, um, Central Europe was um, the center of the world when it comes to theology. Um, it, it, was, it was just like that. And um, even though we have huge funding, um, Still, 
big congregations, um, we very much struggle with um, creating um, new critical theological thinking. Um, and we see um, innovative thinking um, and um, critical and um, theological thinking in lots of um, areas um, wandering away from Germany um, to Scotland, Logos Institute at St. Andrews, for example, um, London, um, Cambridge, then um, uh, Oxford, and then, um, of course, the US um, with um, very prestigious schools like Princeton, like Duke, like Yale, like Harvard, Chicago, you name it. So we have a, we have a great variety um, of very different um, um, seminaries um, and divinity schools um, with um, that are interested um, in um, developing new thoughts. And this is why now uh, we have a huge problem um, in Germany because we have still huge faculties. Um, basic, like very few people studying um, at those um, um, faculties and universities. And so um, very few um, who um, dare to think new things um, within the realm of dogmatics. You have very critical people within the realm of ethics um, and so on, um, but um, very few people who try to think Trinity, Christology, Anthropology, new um, in a dogmatic sense. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I guess um, pretty few German people will read my book because it's just not on their plate right now, um, which is totally fine, totally fine. But still, um, it's, a, it's a very complex situation right now. And it's a pity for Bart because um, Bart um, now serves as a role model um, in terms of being anti-Nazi, which is great, um, but very few people see um, the, the, the potential we still, um, we still can find um, within church dogmatics, um, within his um, thinking. Um, and uh, I hope um, it comes back and it comes back in and to Germany. Um, I, I'm very serious about that. Thank you. Uh, maybe one more general question. After that, we can discuss something else. Uh, you are also a pastor, right? And a pastor in the Lutheran Church. Yeah. So I guess a lot of our audiences are also seminary students. So yeah. they are going to be pastors in the future. So how do you think uh, these kind of studies like you said yourself, dogmatics, not many people would like to study yeah. dogmatics. And you, uh, we can all see you're so passionate about learning dogmatics and about the Trinity, about grace and uh, about Bruce McCormack. Uh, yeah. How do you think uh, it has helped you as a pastor? Yeah. It, so it sounds, uh, you, you won't believe me, but I mean it, um, I'm deaf serious. Um, it is the core of my ministerial work. And it's, I, I mean it. Um, I, and it has to do with the special situation I'm living in. Um, where I live um, is um, the former communist part of Germany. Um, so Germany was divided into two parts for 40 years. And if you wanted to leave the communist sector, um, you got shot. So no, no. So there was so people were imprisoned, and um, the only um, uh, uh, um, so they wanted to build up a communist um, or socialist society, um, and uh, that meant um, that the church has to die. And um, they did not, um, at the end, create it, um, or like they did not succeed. I mean, they built up a socialist society, but um, everybody hates, hated it. Um, but they succeeded to more or less um, let the church die. So where I live, um, 50 or no, 70 years from now, um, in the past, Basically, everyone um, was a member of the church. So maybe 90, 95% um, were church members. 
Um, today, it's 10. 10% um, are still member of the church. Those who are in the church are super active. Um, it is incredible. I have full churches all the time. Um, I cannot complain, but it shrinked shrunk it shrunk um a lot during the past 70 years because um of um the threat of the communist um, government um and what i and i i grew up here as a pastor's kid my father decided at the end of the 1950s to become a pastor um even though it meant that he will never earn a salary his wife was not able to work and all of his kids were not able to go to university Because um, when you are a pastor's child, no higher education for you, no privileges. Um, so, and he did that, even though it meant all of this for his entire family. Um, and uh, I grew up in this situation. After the fall of the wall, I grew up in a, in a basically secular society. And what I encountered um, were people who had no idea what Christianity is. They have no idea. I found, like a year ago, I found it um, a a little a, a choir for little kids in my congregation. I said, "Hey, um, it is tradition in the Lutheran when when I say mass or like when I when I worship, we usually have 10 kids singing the liturgy. That's tradition, and we don't have that here. So let's recreate um, the the little the the, ch the the little kid church choir. So we have this." Um, half of them are not in the church. They are like they they have parents who are not believers, and it, they are so far away from what the church is that um, in during Advent season, I asked um, the first time the the kids to sing the liturgy, and I said to the parents. Um, the first time they will sing the liturgy, it's on um, the second Advent. And I had three mothers coming, approaching me, asking me what day of the week the second Advent is. They did not know that, at, that the second Advent is a Sunday, always. They thought it might be a Wednesday evening. They didn't know. And um, what I see is when I explain to them what the second advent is, what happened on Christmas, when I explain, not tell, but explain to them what Easter means, they are listening. They are getting more and more interested. But the core of this work is that I know what happened on Easter and that I, that I have an idea what happened um, on um, Friday. Um, yeah, Good Friday. And, uh, Good Friday. And what yeah. happened um, on Christmas Eve. Um, so um, I'm not exaggerating. It is the core. They, they realize very soon if you know what you're talking about or if you're just telling old phrases. I mean, you can tell them, yeah, he died for you at the cross. He loves you. Um, But at some point they ask you, but wh why? why? Why did he die on the cross? Wh why do I need a dead God? When you, you said Jesus is God, but when Jesus is God, why, why is it good for me that God is dying? I mean, they have no idea. It's a blank sheet of paper. They have no concept of God. They don't know Jesus Christ. They know that there is a church building in their village, but that's all. So they, when I tell them Jesus loves you, they want to know why. Because it doesn't make sense to them that Jesus loves them. So I cannot say over and over again, yeah, but he loves you. He loves you very much. He even died for you. They say, okay, I get it. But tell me why. I, I want to understand why. And how I can think about God so it makes sense to me as someone who never, ever heard about that. Um, and I see that I can explain it to them. And Bruce McCormick um, is one of the reasons I finally can explain it to them. 
Um, so it is. So I'm not exaggerating. It is the core of ministerial work, honestly. Thank you very much. I hope uh, that will encourage a lot of seminarians to study dogmatics <laughs> while becoming uh, pastors. Uh, maybe for our audience, I, I forgot to mention to you, if you want to ask questions, yeah, you can say it. Uh, uh, and if you don't want to say it in English, you can write it in Indonesian and we will translate it into English. Arvin, do you have uh, another comment while we wait for our audience? Uh, no, I think that's a very, very helpful um, context for pastoral ministry. Um, and it is interesting, given the historical uh, background, that people are looking for um, answers. I think that's not always the condition. Probably in the U.S., people just simply don't care. They already know, and they yeah. find it problematic. And that's an old news, and we don't need it. Um, so it's a very different um very, very different background. Um, but I think the applicability um, or the, the relevance of Christian theology is always necessary in, in ministry, whether it's a congregation that is looking for answers or a congregation that is not looking for answers. <laughs> and But the key is that it has to be relevant um, to them. Um, otherwise, it's just an abstract um, cathedral in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> And basically, this is maybe this is finishing the circle. Um, we started off with um, Wolfhard Pannenberg and the, and the question for history. And this is the exact thing, um, the exact same thing. Um, people want to see the relevance of this message for their lives within this history. They want to see um, how it changes the fate of the world and the fate of their lives. Um, and I think it does. Um, but I and I can proclaim it to them. Um, but at some points I have to, this is my duty as a pastor. At some points I also have to explain it to them. Um, and this is why I need a theology that takes history and what happened to God in history serious because if i don't i am always i'm continuing to talk about an abstract about an idea of god and i am not talking about a living god who is doing things in history in my life and the life of those i am supposed to work for yeah that uh, sounds like what you say, Lutheran aspect of, of life. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> to know Thank Christ you. is to know his benefits. <laughs> well, Do we have questions? Uh, uh, no, I don't know. Maybe people are busy. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're probably intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but one day they will understand. <laughs> okay, if if uh, there is no question from our audiences, we almost reached an hour here. Yeah, I think that was a good session, and we are really grateful for your presence with us, Justus. Yeah, uh, really looking forward for your future work, and maybe some other time we can we can talk again here about Bart or Bruce McCormick. Okay. Uh, well, thank so, you guys very much. It was a blast. It was, it was, yeah. I mean, I talked a lot. Maybe I was supposed to, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, yeah, um, you're supposed thank to. You very, thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm always very delighted to, when, 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 when I see young promising um, people caring about um, dogmatics and car caring about theology and not only the church and whatever, but really um, what, what, what happens um, within theological thinking. Um, and um, you, have, you had splendid questions. Thank you very, very much. It was 
it was um, the best thing that could have happened to me um, on this Sunday noon. Um, thank oh. you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Eustace. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, terima kasih para peserta uh, untuk minggu depan. Uh, mungkin kita libur dulu, nanti kita diskusi lagi. Um, oh iya, yeah. mungkin atau Roma atau apalah. Atau Roma, iya. Yeah. Soalnya, soalnya saya bakal di bakal keluar oh, kota, yeah. jadi yeah, yeah. jadi schedule-nya ntar kita kabarin lagi. Oke, okay, nanti kita kabarin lagi di sosial media. Yeah. Oke. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Yustus. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye. What does goodbye mean in Indonesian? Uh, Just goodbye. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I'll be the same. <laughs> I'll be the same from Germany. <laughs>